Obviously, Israel-U.S. relations are bigger than any particular pair of leaders. We have such deep relations based on interests, based on values, that they really have shown themselves to be, to be stronger than a particular administration. Having said that, I think this transition is a particularly significant transition. Israelis look back on the Obama administration, obviously with a tremendous sense of appreciation for an administration that, that was very committed to Israel's security, that put together one of the largest security packages, the largest ever, that the United States had contributed to Israel. At the same time, there were some fairly fundamental assumptions that were made by that administration which were problematic for Israelis. One of those was in relation to the, the, the Iran nuclear agreement, which is a cause of tremendous concern. Another was in the relation to the role that the US was going to play in the region, where they, it seemed sometimes that the administration saw their role more as being a, a neutral, impartial broker rather than somebody that actually had Israel's back, which obviously made it harder for Israelis to feel that they could move towards a peace. Um, as we move towards um, a new administration, obviously there are more questions than answers, but Israelis are hoping that this will encourage a re-examination of some of those premises, an, a new look at the Iranian actions, uh, a new look at whether the assumption that settlements are such a central, unique aspect to the, to the conflict, rather than one of any number of issues need to be addressed, and I think that sort of rethinking creates an opportunity, possibly for moving ahead in the process. At the moment, uh, we hear a lot of words, and like always, the concern is how those words are going to translate into action. For us, you know, moving ahead in a peace process with the Palestinians means something very simple. It means sitting down at a negotiating table with no preconditions to discuss all the issues. You know, we've had decades of UN resolutions. They haven't brought peace one iota closer. The way to move forward is to actually put the issues on the table and discuss them. Um, it's not clear yet whether this administration is going to be able to do that. Usually President Abbas has a list of conditions, not for a peace agreement, but for just getting to the table, which makes it obviously, obviously much harder, but we're hopeful that that will happen. There's something very odd about an organization that can issue a, a new charter that still effectively justifies terrorism. Uh, under terms of legitimate resistance, and that is being touted as a moderate document. I think it is true that Hamas is under pressure at the moment. It's under pressure domestically because it hasn't delivered to its population, particularly in Gaza. And it's under pressure internationally because it's realized that, that this isn't an organization that actually has the interests of the Palestinian people at, at heart. Israel doesn't have any intrinsic reason for opposing Hamas beyond its, its words and its actions. The fact is there's nothing that Israelis would like more than a peaceful accommodation with our neighbors both in the West Bank and in Gaza. But if Hamas wants to prove that, there are some very simple ways of doing that. It's stop funding terrorism, stop engaging in acts of terrorism, stop glorifying terrorists, and start edu educating your children towards peace because ultimately the truest intentions of your peace are, are less what's written in your charter and more what you teach your children. One of the unusual statistics that comes out in recent years is how optimistic Israelis are. Opt Israelis actually seem to appear you know, within the top 10 or top 11 of the most optimistic, most positive thinking countries in the world. And for people from the outside, it seems strange. You know, how do you explain it? But I think you have to have a sense of history. This year is a, is a remarkable year for Israel. It's a number of very significant anniversaries. It's 50 years since the Six Day War, the reunification of Jerusalem. It's 70 years since the Partition Resolution. It's actually 100 years since the Balfour Declaration, that first statement of commitment by the British government to the re-establishment of a Jewish homeland in Israel. And if you think of any of the people that were involved in any of those historic moments. If they were to be able to walk down any street in Israel today, they would see a country that wildly ex exceeds their greatest dreams. So with all of the challenges, I think Israelis have good mood for a good reason for optimism, and hopefully it will carry forward to the 70th anniversary and onwards.